Hi everybody, welcome to Lexus World and my third and final episode in the CO2 enrichment series. Let's talk about chemical reaction CO2 systems on their own in detail and we'll also do a multi-price giveaway at the end, so stick around. Now if you've been wanting to get into CO2 but you're not sure you have the garden size that justifies a tank or burner, or you want to experiment with CO2 but aren't ready for the deep dive into those systems, then you might look into chemical reaction setups. I'll start by saying that all the variations I'll describe are not capable of handling or are inefficient for a large garden, like bigger than 10 feet by 10 feet, unless you have multiple units of the system going in the same room on opposite sides or something. But doubling or tripling the number of systems will cost double or triple to run. These reaction type systems are usually intended for smaller gardens, roughly between 4x4 and 10x10. The first type is a decomposition system and there's lots of them. When organic matter decomposes, it creates CO2. The systems out there decompose wood chips or leaves or manure or other organics and they tend to put them in a bag that exhales the CO2 slowly over time. Now it's pretty tricky and time consuming to make the system yourself and to calibrate it so that it releases gas at the correct rate while also managing the smell, so I recommend purchasing these chemical reaction systems pre-made for like 30 to 40 bucks. Also keep in mind that a decomposition reaction takes weeks to get rolling after you start it, so be patient. A very well-known brand is Exhale Bags that come with an expiry date of when they stop producing CO2 after the reaction gets started. Make sure you hang them from the ceiling and you're good to go. Every single type of chemical reaction system works best if hung above the plant canopy, by the way. The issues with decomposition systems are the amount of humidity that they put out and the smell, of course. The humidity especially is a lot, which can make it tough to manage in a space that needs to be air sealed most of the time for the CO2 benefits. If your humidity shoots too high, you could get mold and other such problems. Anyway, the second type of chemical reaction system is dry ice melt. Dry ice is easily available in many stores and all it is is CO2 that's been cooled and compressed into a solid. So as long as you let it melt, it'll just release CO2 into the air. For more precision, put the ice inside a container and make small holes in the container with a nail to control how quickly the CO2 is released. However, dry ice is not commonly used for CO2 systems because it melts relatively quickly and it isn't that cheap. If you have access to it at a wholesale price, that's great, go for it. But otherwise, it won't make sense to do dry ice for long because you're going to go through it at a rate of over half a pound per day. And that's in a mid-sized space. Tucking the ice into an area where it gets no light that can help the chunk last longer. The third reaction type is baking soda and vinegar, as I mentioned in CO2 101. As they mix, they release CO2, so all you need to do is create a system that slowly drips vinegar onto baking soda, as you can see right here. You can add a water bottle to tell exactly when your reaction runs out of juice, because the bubbles of gas will stop coming through the water. This system can be cheap and easy, but they are finicky because it takes a long time for the system to produce CO2 at a high enough ppm and then it can overshoot too high if you just leave it to run. You can figure out ways to make the system stop in intervals though. It'll take a little bit of experimentation before you manage to balance the baking soda system to your room size. There's endless YouTube videos out there on building one of these. They're not always meant for gardening, but whatever works. Finally, there is the fourth and probably most popular chemical method, fermentation. Sugar plus yeast plus warm water equals a fermentation reaction that is quite stinky, much like decomposition and creates CO2 as well. 
Once again, there are many do-it-yourself versions of the system that involve bottles and air hose, as well as using brewer's yeast for your yeast, which is a higher-end, longer-fermenting type of yeast. But there are also purchasable, pre-made fermentation systems, like the Enhancer by TNB Naturals. They're today's sponsor, and I'll link to them down in the video description. The pre-made systems tend to include ingredients and features that cut back on the intense smell that comes from fermentation while increasing how long the reaction actually gives off CO2. And those are the four main types. I want to add some important notes to chemical reaction systems because I want you guys to have realistic expectations here. The big note is that they are simply not equivalent to the precision and the convenience of something like a burner or a tank with a regulator. They're all meant as the budget option and they will give you that 800 to 1000 ppm for a certain period of time that may go high initially and then it it'll drop off below the ideal range eventually. If you're looking for a stable level of like 1200 ppms for a prolonged period, that is not the idea here with the chemical reaction systems. Also, once you have any of these four types of systems in your grow area, it immediately turns it into a grow space that has to be checked up on daily. Many of the systems require daily maintenance, like making sure the CO2 levels are reasonable, shaking the fermentation-based systems, topping off vinegar, or replacing dry ice. You can no longer skip days, so bear that in mind. Finally, a lot of these systems are finicky, and because they rely on a chemical reaction, if something goes wrong with the reaction, it might be hard for you to tell that the system isn't working well, or not working at all. So to really be sure that they're working, a CO2 monitor is really recommended, and that raises the cost substantially. All that said, while I'm not a fan of them for the long term, I recommend chemical reaction systems either for someone looking to experiment with CO2 for the first time for cheap, or somebody who's normally not running CO2, but is looking at a calendar and realizes that they must speed up a certain garden by a week or a few weeks to make it to harvest on time. Remember, what CO2 does is increase the rate of foliage growth. That's it. So it's a speed booster that you can use in a pinch. And if you want to win a speed booster like that, TNB Naturals was kind enough to provide me with half a dozen CO2 prize packs to give away. So let's do it. Each prize pack comes with one CO2 canister system like this. It also comes with a refill for the canister like this one. And you also get as a little bonus a uh, TNB Naturals rolling papers and TNB Naturals airproof container for whatever you want to put in there. Now, to get the most out of these fermentation systems, just make sure that you're running a relatively warm grow room, that you hang them above the canopy, that you use an oscillating fan next to them, and that you don't pour in water that's too hot when you start, otherwise you'll kill off the yeast. To win a prize pack, all you gotta do is hit the like button on this episode and leave this hashtag in a comment on this video. Your comment is your entry on any platform you're watching this on, as long as you spell the hashtag right and put it in by November 11th at 9pm Pacific Time. Only one entry per person per platform will count this time, so all you spammers don't bother. If you really want to put in extra entries, you can by leaving the hashtag on my other platforms under this episode. A link to the other platforms in the video description, along with detailed contest rules. As usual, all winners will have their winning comment replied to and be announced on my Facebook page and Twitter when the contest ends. That's it for me today. I think we've run this episode long enough. So otherwise, subscribe if you somehow haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Lex's World.